Hi Aquarius, welcome to your July 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So in July, you have a, um, a bit of energy in the seventh house of committed partnership in the form of your opposite sign Leo. As the month begins, Venus is in this seventh house and that's actually very nice because it uh, lends harmony to this area of um, commitment and other one-on-one -on -one relationships. So if you are a, um, if you have your own business or if you work, if you're in the type of profession, like let's say you're a therapist and you have to deal with people one-on-one, -on -one, this can be um, more pleasurable, more harmonious, or maybe even more financially uh, beneficial. And um, so at the same time, the sun is in uh, the sign of cancer, and that is in your sixth house of work and health. So the sun is uh, bringing uh, the focus to this very practical area of life and uh, making you be more interested in this. And actually, uh, the sixth house is also your daily routine. So um, how you show up in the world is supported uh, by the, uh, the kind of um, way that you order your time and that might be coming into focus for you because on the ninth we have a new moon here so it is possible and of course this is going to be true for people other than uh, Aquarians or at least some Aquarians because of what is happening in the um, greater reality where people are having the, um uh, changes to their their uh, daily schedule because uh, their work requirements are changing. You know, people were working from home and now maybe they're doing um, hybrid types of uh, arrangements. Maybe people are get given the choice of what they want to do. But there's something that might be a new development. Um, and um, when it comes to these these matters as well as the the actual work that you're doing, you know, the sixth house is service to others. And so whatever that is may be um, changing for you. On the 11th, Mercury goes into this house as well. And, you know, bringing into it the diet angle, Mercury rules the sixth house in the sign of Virgo. So it can be about diet and you may be researching diet. Now, now Mercury is out of its shadow and it's moved into a new uh, sign and it is moving forward and you may be interested in learning more about different uh, eating styles or other health regimens maybe you're in some kind of discussion with uh your I, I I don't know. I think the sixth house, I would say your employer could be part of that as well. Although um, the 10th house are authority figures, so maybe that's more appropriate for that uh, sector. But in any case, um, there can be, maybe this is a contract. If you are, you know, starting a new job and you have to fill out documents and so on and so forth. On the 21st, Venus goes into Virgo, and so let's see for Aquarius, we've got, got now we're talking about the eighth house. And um, Venus going into the eighth house can actually have a financial um, undertone uh, to it. So, for instance, the seventh house 
can be the area of money that is coming from some kind of a legal matter. And then in the eighth house, um, it is dealing with the actual source of that money because the eighth house is shared resources. So that is a possibility as well. And one of the, the prime examples is inheritance. Venus in the eighth house is very good for intimacy, uh, being able to connect with somebody very deeply and, um, you know, when somebody is coupled, that they're able to really bear, bear their soul with that person. So it can feel like um, you're bonding at a deep level. And for Aquarius, this can be a really um, novel thing. Maybe this is not the way that you usually do relationships and you're kind of um, coming out of your comfort zone a little bit. The next day on the 22nd, the sun goes into Leo. So the sun, another very benevolent force, goes into your seventh house and that will um, really put the emphasis on your partner. Maybe you're giving your partner more attention and that is leading to a strengthened um, partnership. And um, on the 20th, well, you know, one other thing that the seventh house represents is public relations. So you can be your own best um, PR person when you have the sun in this house. The day after that, on the 23rd, we have a full moon at one degree of Aquarius. So here we have Aquarius. You're going to have two full moons in your sign. Oh my goodness. What is this going to bring to you? I like to think of, you know, the, the, I, well, it's, I'm kind of interrupting my own thought because I was going to say that the second full moon is the blue moon in August, a month from this one. And, um, this one is at one degree, the blue moon is at 29 degrees. So I look at these as bookends and that they have their own story to tell about what is going to happen within the course of a month um, for, or you could even say longer than that. Um, and almost like you're resolving some issues so you can put it to rest. This is going to occur in the first house of the self. And so there may be, with, the, with this one, there may be a dawning of something. Maybe something that you need to change within yourself. For some of you, this is going to actually, the first one, the one that I'm um, speaking about in July, that this is going to occur in your 12th house. And therefore, um, this could be more on the unconscious level in terms of these patterns, these habitual patterns that you have, these bad habits that you just do automatically and you don't even think about it. And yes, you know, the 12th house is also connected to karma. So it, you know, stands to reason that these may be deeply ingrained from other lifetimes. The full moon is a chance to really tap into that and then to release it. And I think especially with the blue moon, that's a great chance to be able to release that. And um, so something, you know, that you want to uh, do to let go of so that you can better your life, I guess I would say. On the 27th, Mercury goes into Leo, into that seventh house, and you're talking, you know, maybe you're talking more with your partner. Some of you may be getting married and you're making wedding arrangements. You're calling, um, you know, churches or halls. Um, to hold a reception, to hold a wedding, um, just all the things that you have to do. On the 28th, Jupiter goes back into your sign, so that's fortunate. So um, this gives you um, a little time between now and December to experience 
uh, Jupiter in your own sign once again. Jupiter will be retrograde, retrograding until October, going direct, but still in your sign until December when it finally goes um, into Pisces for good. And then when it goes into Pisces, that's your second house of earned income. So the better it gets, the better it gets. Um, but right now, even when it's retrograding, it can still give you opportunity to take advantage of um, some lucky breaks, some um, positive, expansive um, opportunities for for you at this time. So enjoy that Aquarius take advantage of it if it manifests for you okay that's what oh no I do I have one more thing I want to tell you about the day after that on the 29th Mars goes into Virgo so um, Virgo for you again you know we already have Venus in this um, eighth house and now we have Virgo so the divine lovers in the eighth really spicing things up this might even be sex magic so you have the intimacy on the romantic end with venus in this house mars is more physical there's that physicality so that could be tantric yoga something like that um whatever it is you're really um you know with mercury in the seventh house you're really talking to your partner Maybe there was a time when you were so wrapped up in your own life that you and your partner drifted apart and you realize that in order to really reconnect, you have to have more conversations. You have to um, make time for romance and you have to be very serious about these things. You can't be cavalier. Um, Mars in the eighth house can also be... Um, a time when you you feel this dry, you feel driven to explore the secrets of the universe. And this can be like on, I don't want to say a more mundane level, but it can be secular at times. This could be conspiracy theories. Some conspiracy theories are connected to the spiritual though. But I mean, just anything, whether it's political or... Um, historical well that can even relate to politics too but it could be like a, on a more worldly basis but it can also be in terms of trying to discover um what life is really about beneath the surface you know um scorpio this is the eighth house ruled by scorpio is all about what lies beneath and not on the surface so it's not superficial and this could also describe your spiritual awakening maybe you're voracious now you've already um had that initial awakening and you're just like i want to try everything the eighth house can be alchemy it can be to me shamanism transformation can be part of this so anyway um i hope that you enjoyed this Aquarius. And if you would like a private reading, the link is below. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.